I was shrinking back, leaning on stuff that God set me free from, trying to stay safe. It's a false safety and just trying, trying to survive. And I think it's also knowing that God's grace in that though, is even in the wine press, he's calling me a mighty warrior. And what kind of kicked me out of that season, I, this was inspired by a question you asked of like resilience or whatever was, was I, I, I think I lost my vision. And part of that was a vision bigger. As soon as Sony got pregnant through two prophetic words on two consecutive days at an event, that's not how she got pregnant. But <laughs> she got, the way she got pregnant, yeah. I don't need to describe it here, but what, you know, but I had somebody come up to me at Pedro Odeo's 100X event and say, hey, I know this is super weird and we're like not supposed to, you know, typically pro- like prophesy things like this. But like I, by this time next year, you will have a boy. Wow. And I was like, wow, it's, you know, you're going to have to talk to my wife, but like, cool. I, I believe it. I receive it. The second day, someone goes out of a dream and I saw you and your wife with a boy, which is very specific and with a timeline on it. And so, you know, I also, another principle of it was what, you know, my friend Alejandro asked me, how did you break out of all that stuff? Another thing was getting in a spirit filled environment. I just remember when I went to that conference, hundred X in Vacaville, not Vacaville, Visalia, I think it was Vacaville, one of those places in California, they, I got into an environment with guys who didn't know me perfect, you know, prophetic people. And of course I'm also kind of just being hard on myself. Cause I'm like, I'm just like, I, I'm trying to love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yeah. You know, we're, we're trying to like, Sonia and I we're we're in church. Um, I'm in my word, but like, you're also you're just carrying something that is not God's best, you know? Yeah. Um, and I just remember experiencing the love of God and, and people calling out who I was. It was like guys saying mighty warrior and some crazy, very specific things for people who didn't know me. But that event, those prophetic words, Sonia getting pregnant, me catching a vision of being a father. And I want to tread lightly because I know maybe somebody are like, we've been trying and like, that's been a dead end for us and so on and so forth. But like, I do think in this case, the enemy's plan would be to steal, kill, and destroy and keep us from our destiny. Yeah. And God's getting the prophetic word to us, us getting out of that. Hope deferred, make the heart sick. My heart was sick and I was numbing the pain. And I started to catch a vision. Then it was like, who do I want to be as a father? And then it was like, I think to answer your question with the long story, it was like, you know, where did that resilience grow? I think that I was ultimately being selfish. I, where survival became selfish for me. And I, as I began to capture a vision for who do I want to be for my son? Who does my team need to be? Who do I need to be for think media? Who do I need to be for the people who are called to serve beyond, you know, our business is kind of at a cool place. And like, I can kind of just, you know, numb the pain and just, just try to disconnect. And so, yeah, man, I, I share that just because guys could be at any kind of, you know, situation in their life, but God is good. And I had an awesome guy, Keith Ferrante, he's kind of a prophet. As I was sharing all that with him and kind of being hard on myself, I was like, yeah, you know, this stuff is, it's not good. It's not a good way of dealing with stress. Who do I think I am? Like method man? Like what am I smoking blunts, you know, sipping, like what is happening here? But he was like, you know, I think, bro, you really need to understand like how much God was with you in that season and how much he understood just the pain you were going through and just that you clearly didn't know how to process your pain properly. And I think the one of our missions now is to, we want to help people have success without losing their soul. We were helping people on YouTube, helping them with video marketing, but we see so many people burning out in the creator economy and content creators and these front facing entrepreneurs, just the pressure of having eyeball. You have the pressure of growth, fame, negative comments. You have guys like PewDiePie talking about alcoholism and just uh, like you, you see it happen with a lot with celebrities. They get in, when you start realizing, you see it with Justin Bieber, young guy gets famous, gets all this attention on him. And then he kind of goes crazy. People are judgmental. You're like, bro, stewarding the pressure of the public and expectations, whether they're there or not, like all of that. Sometimes it's just like, man, I'm just trying to like lock the door and you know, light a blunt and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so obviously though, growing past that, um, as I caught, caught a vision for family, my son, our team, I also just realized how important it is to aggressively work on my character. I need to work harder on myself than I do on my job. 
I need yeah. to work harder on myself than I do on my business. And I need to take my character more serious than I do clout. That character is so important. And so being in the, you know, Christian mastermind we're in, yeah. getting around iron sharpens iron, not some like shallow, uh, allow me to kindly describe, you know, surface cultural Christians that like aren't really living it. You need to be around some guys that are serious, spirit filled, that'll call you on your BS, that'll call you to a higher level, that will speak the word of God and say, dude, you're a mighty warrior. You're better than this. Yeah. Don't shrink to that level of living. Don't try to stay safe. You're like you got to step up and step out. You got to man up and and really be who God has called you to be and can speak that truth into you and potentially speak like kind of like knock it off. You know, I, I listened to Killing Kryptonite by John Brevere is a really good thing. I was also when you're when there's compromise in the Christian's life there. You're are you still saved? Probably. Are you still, you know, if you still love Jesus, you're still living it out. But you lack you, you unplug from the power. Yeah, sin and compromise is the kryptonite, and when Superman's around kryptonite, he's not he doesn't have the power anymore. And so, yeah, I mean that it's been a journey. And so, focusing on, I want my character. So, a lot of times, your charisma can take you further than your you know character can keep you. 